part one motivation we're talking about motivation here we go what is motivation motivation is the need or desire that energizes and directs our behavior so we have a need or we have a desire and that helps direct us we're motivated to do something based on a need or desire now there's a specific theory that kind of talks about motivation it's called your drive reduction theory it kind of starts out with this idea of homeostasis you may have learned in some of your other science classes, you know, your body, the universe, etc. wants to stay in this state of homeostasis. Homeostasis basically means balanced. So everything's balanced. Um, homeostasis in your body would mean your glucose levels are balanced, your sugar, blood sugar, uh, your blood sugar, <laughs> your glucose levels are balanced, your heart rate's at a nice balanced level, your everything's just balanced, everything's just level, okay? Well, when you have a need for something, that becomes unbalanced, okay? So that need creates a desire, right? Or a drive in this case, the drive, creates this drive. So if we have a need for food, we have this drive, it's created called hunger, right? And this drive, then we have to do something about that drive. And that to reduce for the food, we're gonna eat, right? So we needed food, we have this drive called hunger, how are we going to reduce that drive called hunger? We're going to eat. And so life's about, so if our hunger level goes up, right, we want to stay, if this is balanced right here, this is level, we want to bring it back down to balance, right? We want to bring it back down. And so your body's constantly, you know, shooting up, and then we're trying to bring it back down to homeostasis. And that's basically the idea behind uh, drive reduction theory. This goes for, you know, mostly for biological needs is what we talk about with drive reduction theory. And an incentive is just a, a reason for doing something. It can be positive or negative, but it's, a, uh, it's an influencing factor on the reason why you do something. So you can have a positive incentive or a negative incentive. I'm going to not cheat on my test because I'm going to get kicked out of school if I do. That's a, you know, be a negative. That'd be an incentive to not cheat. Or I'm going to be really good uh, in my class today because I will get rewarded with early lunch, okay? Those are incentives. They help us. Now, another uh, thing with motivation, this is something that every psychology student needs to know is Maslow's hierarchy of needs. This is very famous, and he has five levels. And the key with Maslow's hierarchy of needs is that you've got to fulfill the lower levels before you can move up to the higher levels, okay? So you have to, first of all, everybody's need is physiological. We have this need to breathe, to eat, for water, for sex, for sleep, for excretion, right? That's to go to the bathroom, homeostasis. We have these needs, right? We have these needs to do these things. That's our number one thing. So there's some people in the world, right, where this is all they're thinking about, or sometimes in some situations, right? That's all they're thinking about. So they're not thinking about love. They're not thinking about esteem. They're not thinking about self-actualization. They're only thinking about getting food and water for themselves, okay? So that's number one. So you've got to do, you got to do number one first before you can move on. So once you fulfill that, then you can move up to level two, right? So after you've got food and water, then you're thinking about how can you keep yourself safe, right? You don't care how you keep yourself safe necessarily if you really can't eat, right? That's next, right? So you're going to do what you got to do to eat first, even if it means becoming unsafe. All right, but once you have food, then it's all about safety. So it's safety and food. Like these are almost the same levels. I mean, but physiological is a, is a bit more important, right? Because we're going to die if we don't have it. Safety might lead us to death, but we're not going to be directly die by being unsafe. We're going to, as a, as a secondary result, right? So these two are the primary. After we have safety, and uh, physiological needs met. Then we're looking for more things like love and belonging. So this is where after you, if you're safe and you have your physiological needs met, now your your next need for people in life is friendship, family, sexual intimacy. These types of things are the next level. Okay, so first you got to take care of yourself physiologically. Then you got to take care of yourself in safe with safety, right? This is uh, safety for us having some sort of employment, right? Health, those types of things. Then you're looking for love and belonging, right? Okay. After that, and so, and so some people, you know, are stuck down here for their entire lives, right? If you satisfy those, then you get up to the, the top two, which is a 
the fourth level it would be esteem. So you have self-esteem, respect for others, confidence, achievement. These are the sorts of things that if you can get, take care of these four, these three, you can move up to esteem and esteem starts becoming important to you. Um, if you don't have a job, right, you don't have safety, um, and you don't have uh, even friendships, you're not going to care so much about uh, your self-esteem or respect for others, right? You're just trying to get by. You're trying to take care of these things. All right, but if you do get to see if you do have self-esteem, respect for others, then you're, you're reaching the top level, which is self-actualization, which some people don't even ever get to. We don't ever get to this level up here. And this is where you start thinking about things like morality, creativity, spontaneity, lack of prejudice, acceptance of facts, those sorts of things all occur at the very top of the pyramid. So this is, you know, takes a while to get to. Not everybody gets here. And these are the things that, uh, you know, is needed to fulfill your life, right? Self-actualization. But before you get there, like I mentioned, you have to get through these. So you should remember these uh, five levels, right? These five levels could show up on the AP exam. And uh, you should probably know what order they go in. And you also just need to remember that each one builds on the other. You can't get to... You can't worry about esteem unless you're safe first, okay? So moving on, we're going to talk about more about the physiology, physiology of hunger, okay? Because, right, our food is one of our basic uh, needs, right? we got to eat, right? Everybody's got to eat. Um, so glucose is just uh, the sugar in your blood. It's basically your energy system. Basically, your body takes all its food, breaks it down into glucose, and your body uses that as energy, okay? Um, and if you remember back from the brain chapter, the biopsychology chapter, remember the hypothalamus, one of its roles is, was the four Fs, right? Fight, flight, food, and sex. And uh, one of its roles was food, so hunger. And so your uh, hypothalamus is, is regulating all these different hormones in your body to kind of regulate when you're hungry or not. So it's got these one, two, three, four, five, six different hormones that all start at different places in your body and it's regulating those um, for your hunger right in your hypothalamus depending on what part of your hypothalamus is activated depends on what's going to be stimulated here so um, different hormones and let me, I'll briefly go over these you should have a general idea about these where they come from etc I mean I don't know if you need to know exactly word for word what they are but you need to have a general idea okay so here we go Insul insulin controls your blood glucose, right? You've heard of people with diabetes, their insulin levels are too high, so that's when your blood sugar level is too high and you can run into problems with that, right? So insulin controls your blood sugar, all right? Uh, leptin is secreted by your fat cells, right? So you'll see fat cells right on the outsides of your body, right? They're not in your organs. And they cause the, the brain to increase the metabolism. So if you've eaten a lot of stuff, your brain's going to Increase its metabolism. So, hey, I've got some food I can use. All right, increase the metabolism, and let's start using up this food for energy. All right, so that's leptin. Orexin is secreted by the hypothalamus, which is up here, right in your midbrain, and it, it triggers hunger. Right, so orexin triggers hunger. It's monitoring all this other stuff, and the orexin is what triggers the hunger signal. So these other things are you know being sent up to the brain, and the orexin's what sticks it out. Ghrelin is when that empty stomach sends this signal says I'm hungry it's a hormone from your stomach it says I'm hungry opstatin is also secreted by the stomach and it says I'm full so ghrelin is your stomach it says I'm hungry opstatin is from your stomach and it says I'm full and then finally PYY is your digestive tract right when your digestive tract is full it says I'm not hungry so sometimes you're not necessarily full, but you might be haven't gone to the bathroom in a while, might feel backed up a little bit, you haven't eaten in a while, but you're still not hungry. You don't feel like you want to eat right now, and that, that would be PYY. Okay? Um, finally, we're just going to talk about, so we're talking about food, we're talking about some eating disorders, and these, are, these show up on the AP exam quite often, and they're actually very um, applicable to uh, teenagers and adolescents and, you know, people in their young 20s is, these three different types of eating disorders, which occur uh, much more prevalently in Western society, uh, including the United States. <clears throat> so anorexia, anorexia nervosa is an eating disorder that usually starts out as a weight loss, and then it becomes uh, extreme. It becomes rapid weight loss. It's where you lose 15 or more percent of your body weight, usually rapidly. Um, three out of four people who have anorexia are, are girls um, and they're in their adolescence, 
And what it is is you just have this huge overemphasis on body image, on the food's gonna make you fat or it's gonna make you overweight. And you're just overly concerned with your body image and weight. And you it will oftentimes be paired this up with uh, binge eating followed by purging. Purging means you're either gonna um, throw it up or you're gonna exercise or you're exercise extreme exercise or go on a fast or something like that and then that's followed by depression so there's oftentimes anorexia nervosa is uh you know will be anore you'll, you you might include binge eating in there purging and then depression afterwards and it's this vicious cycle that continues around um these these eating disorders i should also mention aren't easily diagnosed and so it's not easy to see these things um, all the time, either even parents or friends might not notice that people certainly have these. And if, if you do have something like this, it's important that you know that other people are going to notice as easily as you might think. And you need to um, ask for help. And if you are a friend of somebody who you think might be doing this, you don't need to be extra aware because it's not easy to tell. Okay, bulimia nervosa is where you're going to eat a lot you're gonna binge eat right you're usually gonna eat these highly fatty foods or foods that you really like a lot and then you're gonna purge them so you're gonna eat and usually throw them up or you're gonna fast immediately afterwards like you're not gonna eat a lot for a long time or you're gonna exercise just extreme exercise to get it out so you're gonna to try to get rid of it so usually this is felt by anxiety and depression afterwards after you've eaten this stuff again this happens normally to girls in their late teens early 20s uh, again, this sometimes starts as uh, a weight loss, other times doesn't. And then there's binge eating. So binge eating is basically bulimia, except you don't purge. So binge eating is you eat these highly uh, fatty foods, or you eat a lot of foods, or these comfort foods, and then it's, you don't get rid of you don't purge them, you don't exercise, you don't fast, you don't um, throw them up. You just feel really bad about it. You go into this depression state afterwards. And so all of these, right, inc include, uh, often include depression, which is, you know, not a good thing for anybody. And it's a depression over your body image, right? And in the West, as you know, in America, we have this fascination with body image, which isn't necessarily a good thing um, because it leads to these eating disorders. And so it's just something that you really need to be paying attention to and be careful of. And if you have any questions about it, you need to ask uh, an adult um that you trust to help you with this because it's uh, it can be quite a problem and it's not something that you want to mess around with okay that's all i have for motivation today and we'll talk about uh, sexual motivation next time